Welcome, everybody. Saturday Sweep Series, Wall Street Jesus here. Uh, basically, a recap of flow, sentiment, what we've been seeing in the markets. We go over some uh, strategy, game plan. Again, we take the signals we see on a day-to-day basis. Uh, we try to put the pieces to the puzzle together. Sometimes they give us or set set up for us high confidence trades. Sometimes um, high confidence trades maybe to the downside if you're into that sort of thing. And sometimes where I think we are currently um, is to not do much. Or I guess there's, listen, there's b- bullish signals, right? There's bearish signals. And then there's there are times when the stuff you rely on just aren't telling you much. You know, so I'm a big proponent, and you guys, we've been talking about this almost every single webinar. When everything lines up, okay, when everything I have confidence lines up, you know, we call it the sweet spot, that's where, and you'll hear Lucci say this as well on his end, okay, and it may be different signals for each and every one of us, you know, different stuff we're looking at, all right, but more so if you're an experienced trader and been around the block and you're doing this for a living, there are times when everything lines up and that's where you want to be the most aggressive. That's where you want to swing the hammer, lay down the hammer, so to speak. Okay. And the rest of the time around that, if everything washes out each other, in other words, if over time your winners even out with your losers and they should, if you're using the proper risk management, et cetera. If that's the case, you're fine with that because the times you swing the hammer or lay down the hammer or however the phrase is, that's pretty much from every professional trader I've been around. That's your P and L, you know, that's the bulk of your P and L. I told you, as a day trader, primarily, I swing trade as well on a smaller scale, but as a day trader, primarily, there are days, I call them scratch days, whether I made a little money or lost a little money, in my eyes, it's irrelevant uh, because, you know, they're just days I'm going through the motions. I'm, I hate to use the word entertaining myself, but there's nothing great out there. Stuff isn't lined up the way I would like it. And, you know, I'm still trading off signals of flow and stuff like that, intraday sentiment signals. Um, But I know they're not high confidence setups. Okay. So that's the thing. And each and every one of us have to discover that on our own, emotionally, how we're wired. For me, I feel more comfortable because I'm watching this stuff every second, every minute throughout the day. I find I'm more disciplined when in times like that, I'm playing nice and easy. I'm not going to get rich. I'm not going to get poor, but it's kind of giving me something to do while paying attention to the flow and sentiment throughout the day. Um, And I don't mind that, you know, it keeps me in check. A lot of people are saying, you know, we tell you just move to the sidelines. Yeah. That's easier said than done. You come in every day at seven 30, eight o'clock in the morning to five, six o'clock at night and watch nothing but market stuff throughout the day. And I want to see you do nothing for a decent period of time. You know, that's, that's the tough part of this game. If you can do that, so be it. But for me, and like some of you are talking about, even when stuff doesn't line up in that sweet spot, you can make a little money. You understand? So the worst case scenario, you're not getting hit over the head and giving back the sweet spot profits, the profits you made off that sweet spot. You're not giving that back. Okay. And that's, and that's kind of where we are, I think. And you know, those who follow me on Twitter, we've been talking about this now, well, since the beginning of the week, but it's been longer than that, that the flow has been bullish. Okay, overall, but at the same time, all the names that the better looking flow is coming into has pretty much 
done what they needed to do. Okay. And yeah, there are names out there that caught flow and the stocks maybe didn't do anything, but generally the best of the action out there, you know, and that's continuing to come into the marketplace now is coming into these tech names. And a lot of these tech names have exploded. Okay. And here's where you run into that issue that climb the ladder. Remember we were talking about this in January and it leads to trouble at one point in time, it's going to lead to trouble where, you know, you're buying um, a micron at the sweet spot. You're selling it. You're buying it back again. You're selling it. Then you're buying it higher again, right? Or you're moving to a WDC or an NTNX. And these things just continue to push higher. And that's all that's going on. So while all that's going on, Underneath the hood, what I'm paying attention to day in, day out, you know, is there anything new going on? You know, because when we're in a bullish environment, okay, for example, let's take post-election, okay? That was one period in time where flow was bearish, sentiment was extremely bearish, and then we got that flip, Okay. Then we got the flip where the flow started turning bullish. We started to see names, price start to move in the other direction, which was to the upside. And you had that drastic flip. What we continue to see after that initial push, we started to see them bomb and get aggressive in everything. You know, that's one of the reasons I started to swing trade again. The flow was so broad. You know, we were seeing action and missiles, as I call them, you know, big aggressive bets in names. We would, we never saw a flow in. You know, Caterpillar, Deer, transportation names, UNP, CSX, railroad names. You know, some commodity names, some infrastructure names, tech names. So, we continued every week. It was amazing. We, we were in awe because, again, we were coming off a time, a period in time where we weren't seeing much of any cool activity. You know, the flow was bearish up until I think it was a couple days before the election and then started to turn bullish. Okay, but we were seeing, you know, mostly put activity. And then all of a sudden, we started to see these big size aggressive bets in names that would, you know, haven't seen action for a long, long time, steel names, you name it. Okay. So that's what usually happens when you're in that bullish environment. Okay. When the smart money, the big money, whatever you label you want to put on them, when they want to be risk on, that's what you see. And we started to see that if you guys remember initially, right out of this. Okay. It's a little different scenario because, you know, pre-election, the market wasn't off a huge rally, blah, 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 blah. But we had a decent sized pull. We had some bearish overall options flow. Okay. Sentiment got extremely bearish. And then we started to see again, those big bullish bets start to come in, right? The micron, we went over the names several times. But what happened was, as we are starting to push higher, and as bearish sentiment switch, you know, flips to bullish, the the buying has really dried up in a sense. Okay, somebody mentioned, yeah, you know, that was we're still seeing big action in X, but again, we we've seen big action in X. It's nothing new. You know what I mean? This is nothing new. We saw bull missiles in X pre-tariffs before Trump started talking about these tariffs. And we continue to see big size bets in names like CRM, but we've been seeing this forever now. You know, forever, even post earnings the day right after earnings, they came in and hit this thing as hard as they can possibly hit it. But, you know, you get this. And you guys remember me 
I constantly try to get you guys to look through these lenses because it's important. You cannot weigh, okay, bullish activity that comes in here initially, right? Micron was just, we were just seeing regular flow for a while, right? It was bullish overall, but wasn't anything out of the ordinary for Micron. Then all of a sudden, we start to see that sharp, aggressive buying come into this candle right when the stock looks like it's ready to fall out of bed. Okay, you cannot weigh that initial activity down here, this spot, as heavily. You can't put as much weight into that signal as action coming in up here. You know, Micron has been seeing both for this whole trip up, this whole thing, this whole ramp. And the reasons why. Again, we don't know the true intent or we don't know what these guys are ever doing behind the scenes in any of this stuff, okay? But what I know throughout my experience, they roll positions a lot, okay? And that initial activity, okay, that juicy, sexy-looking sweeper activity that I do cartwheels over always comes into spots that you and I would be hesitant to buy them. And I know when this happens and you're still seeing size action there, they're not putting on even more risk up here. You know, they are maybe rolling positions, locking in some profit, pushing the position up and out to continue to have upside. They will do that. We talk about this. They will do that to this thing, to the music stops. They don't care what that last batch of call buying, you know, when and if it goes under. Because they did this this whole trip and they killed it. So that's why when you see a move like this, an action like this, now it becomes tougher here. Now this becomes difficult. The micron flow for me now, the only edge that I possibly see is if you get a little weakness and you see them get aggressive, you got a quick trade there at the most. And I'd be hesitant up here of looking at stuff like that. Okay. And again, Micron is just one of them. It showed you the CRM. You know, you got WDCs. These things are gone. Can they continue to push higher? Of course they can. But to start a position here becomes a lot more difficult. Okay. So what I look for after you get that first batch of flow. Okay. And then it was perfect. We got this wash, right? We were talking about that washed out of bullish sentiment, did everything we could possibly want this right here. The action heated up again. And now they've, they're not buying anything else. They're not buying anything else. You know, they're, this whole entire week, and granted, it was March expiration. You know, we're seeing activity in the same names. And you got to understand, all that March call buying, remember all that March call buying we were seeing in all these hot names? What do you think happens to all those positions in open interest? They could expire. So, of course, you're going to see more buying in these names again because they're going to replace some of those expiring March positions. You understand? So even though it may look like new, fresh buying, in reality, it's not. They could be taking profits, like, and I'm sure most of them are. Okay, in simple English, to give you an example so you understand, let's say personally you have, let's just say, 50 March micron calls. Okay. They were expiring at Friday. So you still want exposure to micron. So you go out and you buy September upside calls. And instead of, you know, the same amount of money, you buy 25 of them. And you lose, and you got some money for the ride there. And you went further out. That's basically what they're doing. It's not new buying. 
So that's why I think we were seeing a lot of that this week, and we were seeing it on the put side as well. Why? Because if you have protection and it expired worthless, which it probably did, but that's the point of protection. You don't care if it expires worthless. It's insurance. Okay, but if you had March, if you were had some March protection that expired Friday, you're going to go and replace that protection because you want to protect again. So you're going to buy some puts and some other strikes. So that's what we were seeing primarily all week. And that's why you've heard me say, both on Twitter and those of you who are member, members of the Steam Room, the flow this week was a mess, a menagerie. I had no idea. We have no idea what was real buying what was not. Okay? The only way, the only thing that would have stood out to us if we saw, if we saw buying or rotation in new names that weren't catching all that March activity. Okay? And then you can look at open interest. You see, you know, there's nothing there for March. The, there are no calls expiring there. This guy's putting on a new bet here. But we weren't seeing any of that. If we were seeing, I won't say any, we were seeing some in names probably some of you never heard of. So th that's where we are flow-wise. And everybody, a lot of you guys over the years have asked me, you know, what stands out flow bearish? What, what, what do you look for in puts? And I don't look at the put side. Usually the put side will come later on when markets start to roll over, momentum starts to roll over, okay? And it's impossible to tell what's just protection hedging in a bull market and what's a directional bet because there's so little of it, okay? But throughout my experience, when they sit on their hands, and they refuse to buy or get aggressive and buy, I should say. For me, that's a sign of caution because they're not looking to take any additional risk here, right? Because that's what they're doing. They're in the options market and they're speculating in options, trying to utilize leverage. So they're taking, you know, as much risk as they possibly can. That's why options are so risky. But that's a bullish sign when the smart money is getting aggressive in a risk asset, risk asset like options. Okay, but when they're not looking to take that additional risk and utilize that leverage, it doesn't mean a crash is imminent. But they, they may be concerned about something. One of the reasons could be some of these things, you know, are just too far gone right now. And... They really don't see any reason to buy anything else, any other groups. Okay, the problem with that is that can change next week. So I know a lot of you guys out there want that short signal, and that's why, for me, it's not there unless you can unravel rather quickly. And I know most of you can't because what happens is you're going to build a bearish bias and even if the flow starts to turn, you're still going to be stuck to that bearish bias and refuse to unravel that position and get run over. But for me, and what I tried to tell everybody who is interested in following flow, et cetera, that if they're, if they're taking a conservative approach, a cautious approach, that means we should do the same. You know, if they're just rolling in positions that have been red hot, then you should be looking to do the same, right? Rolling is a form of profit taking. They're taking some profits off the table. So maybe if you're in names like this, you should start considering taking some profit off the table, taking some risk off the table. You know, if you're too long, again, you know, a la January, if you're too long and you're not comfortable, you look to put on a little protection. So even though every, we're not seeing necessarily bearish signs, we're not seeing anything extremely bullish. Okay. And eventually these names, they get exhausted. They get exhausted. Maybe when they come out of these names, 
then they'll start to shift some funds elsewhere. It's possible. But right now it's just too selective. And what I mean by selective is, you know, they'll go and they'll buy one biotech name. You know, where I know when they're excited about rotating into biotech, they tattoo the whole entire group up and down. You know, just like they do tech. So, I, for me, it's a wait and see approach. And then, again, when I, I look at the flow, right, I try to interpret, again, just what the flow may be signaling, right? A gauge on what the smart money is doing is how I like to put it. So now that we have a gauge, we feel on what the smart money is doing. You, I like to take a look at sentiment. Okay. And there's a ton of sentiment out there to look at. Everybody has their favorites and so forth. I mean, sentiment trader has a gazillion of them. You can look at, I, uh, primarily I like, I like options related sentiment because there's physical money being put behind it, right? Risk money, speculative money unlike surveys and stuff like that. And it's signaling pretty much the same exact thing. Let me just show you a couple of the quick things we looked at together that we saw. Okay. Here's that NASDAQ sentiment chart, right? The beloved NASDAQ sentiment chart. Yeah, you know, down here, even with tech strengthening, this told us, you know, there was just no bullish positioning in tech. And Flo was telling us they were, that's the group they were getting hot and heavy in, right? They, and even back then they weren't rotating, but it was still early on in the flow where there were opportunities out there. We're back here now. Okay. So we went from here, net short, extreme bearishness, setting up an extremely bullish sentiment signal for us to now we're buck we're back at bullish extremes in Nas in nasdaq okay not as bullish as january but january was ridiculous right that was ridiculous all right so this is kind of signaling the same thing right that we're seeing at a flow Or, uh, I've got to put the call somewhere around here. Let me show you. I'll just rip through some of these things so you get an idea of just basically everything's showing the same thing. This is one trader sentiment. Again, a short-term measure, overall trading trader sentiment. And you got that extreme bullish signal, right? Everyone got all wrapped up into the rally. They come in at the tippy tippy top of this. What happens? They get bearish again. Oh, my God. Tariffs, the end of the world. Sets up another bullish signal. Beautiful thing. And then all of a sudden, tariffs and everything don't matter. And, you know, you get too hot. Now, where are we? In no man's land. Exactly what flow is telling us. You know, everything I look at pretty much lines up. Here's another one we looked at. Remember, this is the degenerate leveraged bearish ETF buying. Let me say that again. Leveraged bearish ETF buying. Three times, two times bet that the market's going down type of crap. That degenerates play, right? They loaded up on those things into the lows. Okay, then they started coming out of them as the market pushed higher. Then, whoop, they thought they had another opportunity. And now, okay, they want nothing to do with it. Okay, so again, you can see even back here, like a thing like this, it doesn't mean that the market's going to fall apart per se, right? This is just bearish ETF. Now, when people are feeling bullish, they don't want any bearish ETFs. But it goes to show you how big this move was in a short amount of time. You know, they want nothing to do with this. So this signal you can throw out, out the window. Where's the uh, put the call? Is this the put? Is this the put the call? No, this is the one. I, yeah, there's a put the call. 
I think it is. Yeah. This is the uh, equity put to call. No man's land. No man's land. So, and, and that's the key. Okay. And this is why people stop looking at like put the calls and stuff like that. Because this doesn't tell us anything, but you know how some traders are. They want to take a signal out of everything and think it's actionable. What this is telling us now is nothing, nothing. But basically, you have no edge of sentiment in the option market. You know what I mean? That's what this is telling you that you had back here at the lows. So you could see all the stuff. I got all the stuff on here. Option buyer sentiment gauge. Same thing. Bullish. Uh, oh, I flip flopped it the wrong way with the green and the. Oh no, I did it right. So here, yeah, I did it wrong. This is the the bullish signal for us that we had with everything else. Now we're back neutral. You know so. Everybody has stuff they look at, you know, for me throughout my experience, that's the, this is the only stuff that has worked. Okay. Now, if I was seeing, and I'm sure one of you will ask this question, if I was seeing flow rotating into other groups, I would still look at as, as a bullish signal, even with sentiment, not behind it, because sentiment could be neutral-ish. And we're still okay. You understand? You don't need extreme bearish sentiment to you know be active on the call side. But you want to see stuff that doesn't look like this that you can buy, right? Fresh names. You want other initial activity setups. And the, here's the beauty of that rotation. You know, and that's what was so good a lot of part of last year. The rotation, see, it's a lot easier when money aggressively is being poured into a bunch of biotech names than just one biotech name. Because, you know, the, the what if biotechs aren't doing anything as a whole, right? If it's not a hot group, it's not catching sweeper activity, you know, that aggressive sweeper activity. And if they're not moving as a as a group, you could you know you could sit in that biotech and it could do nothing for a good amount of time, even though it caught flow. The beauty of the sweeper activity is that when they come into groups, you got the wind at your back. You know the whole group is moving. So that's the tough part of them. You'll have some winners, but again, it's just. You'll have some winners. You'll have some things that don't do much. Here's one that wasn't tech, right? That STZ did well, extremely well. Okay. But here's an example of one that didn't. DHI, that can't get out of its own way. Why? This sector, they want nothing to do with it. Right? Housing is a tough group right now. So if they got aggressive in, let's say, DHR, Lennar, Pulte, some of the home building supply names, like we've seen them do, you know, then we can have some confidence to play the group. And a lot of, remember we were talking about, a lot of the activity was with time, right? A lot of the size activity, Julys, August, September. So when you get that initial activity and it pours into the whole group or the whole entire market, even if it's July activity, you get that lift, you get that momentum. But if it's just one name and they're hitting up Julys, you know, it might not be that easy. And forget about energy. Energy is the toughest of all of them. You know, that's, that's what has discouraged a lot of... E just traders in general, but mostly anybody who looks at flow, energy has gotten to the point where it's frustrating. And I'll tell you why. Yeah, a lot of you guys look at energy. What I found is 
they can come after an energy name. And chances are, if crude gets hit over the head, I don't care what energy name you're in, you're likely to get hit over the head in that name too. So, you know, what's so... It's almost like you're better off playing the, the underlying, if that's the case. Now, maybe if they got aggressive in the whole group, you know, maybe you can make a case for getting along a couple a couple names there. But they've been selective there too, right? We spoke out a couple of names. You had CVX, had some buying. Exxon Mobil caught a good-looking sweeper. Can't get out of its own way down here. Had a little bit of lift, slammed back down. Can't get out of its own way. You know, we've had some stragglers. One of you guys mentioned that NFX that saw some flow. I think they might have been replacing a March position there too, by the way. But NFX saw some flow down here. Now, I'm not seeing anything in ETFs. And by the way, more importantly, and this is something we, we've talked about for a while, the positioning in crude has been a nightmare if you want to be bullish here. Everybody in their mother is on the long side of this trade. I'm talking about the actual future now. I haven't seen this week uh, the COT data. Maybe some of you guys have seen it. So I don't know if there's any drastic change, but the highest net long position in a long, long time in crude. It's so it's not going to be easy. Right? If everybody's long, it's not going to be easy. And if everybody's long crude and it's not going to be easy, you need, and again, for positions, you need to really get lucky on an individual name or you need the names to start outperforming crude for you to find any success there. It's just tough. It's It's a tough trade. You see... When you like how how easy it is to trade tech, you know what I mean. You see how you know what I you see the flow. You, you don't have to. You're not relying on some outside factor. Uh, energy, the gold miners, they they're tough. The same thing with the gold miners, right? You can see flow in a gold miner. Okay, it could be some decent looking flow in one gold miner. But if the gold miners are soft as a group, what do you think is going to go on? Is that one gold miner just going to storm higher while the rest of the group heads south? Rare. I got burned on that. I'm preaching to you. I got burned on it. PVG. You guys remember that? I'm still in these things. I had some time. That's why I took a shot with it. Had some decent flow. Everything I'm telling you guys today, I thought about, but it went in one ear and out the other. Actually, you know what it was? The gold miners looked good at the time, so I figured I might get even just a trade out of it, and I had some time behind it. The gold miners did okay, and this thing, I don't know. They warned about their gold production, whatever, and look, whoop, gone. And you look at, you know, the gold miners there. So, like, what... Are you going to find a gold miner that's going to go the opposite of this chart here? Tough. So you really want to see, especially in those type of groups, you really want to see them get aggressive in the group, you know, and that's where that, that selective buying can become a real pain in the ass. Excuse my French. Uh, and that's what we're seeing as a whole in the market right now. All the good looking action as a whole has been in tech. Microsoft, Intel, WDC, Micron, you know, semi names left and right galore. So what do we do? For me, for me personally, I think this coming week, I think is I'm looking forward to this week because I think the flow is going to clear up a lot now that that quad witch is out of the way. And I think we're going to see their true colors. There's no more replacing March positions and shit like that. If they're not looking to buy anything, we're going to see. It's going to be pretty blatant that they're not buying anything. And the longer that goes on, in my opinion, it's only a matter of time before those put sweepers come in, grab the ball. And again, doesn't mean crash. 
but just means the momentum could be south for the time being. So we need one. Of, we're looking at two things here. Either they're going to get sentiment to the point where it gets to bearish extreme again. And listen, it's possible. Happens a snap of a finger. Trump is doing his best for us on that part. All right. So we got the help of the president. He knows how to ruffle some feathers. That can happen right quick. So either we're going to see something like that, and then we'll see buying come into that. Or once they sell and start to take profits, I'm even talking about on the equity side, of these hot names, maybe they start going into some other stuff because there's a whole market out there that hasn't done jack. And I think even if we head lower, guys, as a market as a whole, I don't think it's going to be too long before they go into other stuff. I can't see them hitting, you know, some of the names that have already been hit to the downside with no bounce as hard as they're going to hit some of the stuff that's gone parabolic here. So they may look at that as an opportunity, right? Let me take some chips off in some of these hot techs and let me go into some of the stuff that's been deflated for a trade. But I, I don't, I'm not in the business of predicting. You understand? I don't like to get in the house. I don't want to sit here and say, oh, I think they're going to rotate into the home builders, so let me load up there. Well, every time I've done that, I got myself into trouble in this game. Yeah, I want to sit tight and let, let stuff set up out there. That's all. And right now, um, there's not much of a setup in my eyes. Okay. And even if this market, again, not to much, just ramble on on the overall market, maybe we're just in this sideways consolidation type thing where at the lower end of this range, we'll see some buying come in. And at the top end of this range, they're going to hit the brakes for the time being. That's certainly possible, right? So something similar pattern, similar to like Micron that we saw here, right? With a little downward bias, but nothing major, but a whole lot of just this in the overall market. Why? Because we came off a ridiculous move to the upside. The markets last year had a ridiculous move to the upside. And maybe that's how it's going to digest here. Possible. We'll see. All right, so that's that. Anybody have any questions as far as, you know, looking at this stuff? I have questions um, on some of the sentiment stuff. Uh, sentiment Trader has everything. You could subscribe to Sentiment Trader. He, if you're interested in sentiment, he has everything. Uh, you could get put the calls and stuff like that off um, some free sites. You know, they may not be as clean. Stockcharts.com, that stuff. Uh, some of the other like the NDSI and stuff like that, you got to you gotta pay for. Uh, but a couple of people have it out there, and they're not too expensive. All right, but anybody have any questions as far as... Oop, what I got? I got stuck here. Um, on what we're seeing here flow-wise, anybody at all? Make sense? Oh, you know what? I'm looking at this morning's questions. This is unbelievable. Hold on, guys. That's why I'm not seeing any of you guys here. But everybody sees what, what I'm talking about here as far as, you know, the flow lining up with sentiment, and it's not telling us bullish bears. It's just telling us nothing right now. All right? And that's why I think we sit tight, relax, until we get a better setup. It's okay to play. You know, it's okay to play. But you just, you don't want to weigh this signal as much as you do up here. You know what I mean? I can't. I just can't phrase that right. I try every time. What I'm trying to say is if you you want to be most aggressive early on here. You know, here when we're seeing what we're seeing at a flow and sentiment, you want to take it easy. That's what I'm trying to say. What is quad something? Quadruple witching is what I was trying to say, Paul, and I rushed, rushed through it. <laughs> so quadruple witching basically, look, it's monthly expiration. It's a big expiration, Paul, 
which you probably know. You know, we had March monthly expiration, a lot of positions there that need to be adjusted. You know, and when you see, like, I guess because maybe I'm looking at the flow every day, but I don't know if you realize it as well. There was a ton of March buying, call buying. You know, just like we're seeing now a lot of July buying, you know, for some reason. And and it could be because of the quarter, you know, the first quarter comes to an end. But there was a ton of March activity. So all that stuff, all those positions have to be adjusted. And from my experience, when they do, you get a lot of mess. You get a lot of mess. For me, you'll see call buying, put buying, call buying. Put buying. There's no... There's no flow, you know, there's no momentum to it. It's almost like the flow is not even making sense. It's mixed as opposed to where, you know, for the day, if it's bullish, we'll see majority call buying, very selective put buying during quad, which you'll see a lot of mixed, a lot of mixed. And again, mixed flow to me when see a lot of people. Let me show you this quickly. A lot of people who first get involved in flow and see this, they think, oh, this, there's no edge in this because they're looking at every individual order thinking it's actionable. And that's the last thing you should be doing when you're trying to learn to use flow as a valuable tool in trading. All this is not on here because it's actionable. There are some orders that may be worth taking action. But the reason we, if we thought we should just look at that, then we would just have those type of orders on the board here, right? Why would we put all this? Why would I look, I look at even more than this, okay? But the reason why we want members to get used to this it gives you an idea. Again, it's a gauge on the how the smart money is taking an aggressive approach in a risky asset like options in real time. So it tells you a lot, right? If they're playing, if they're getting aggressive and playing with confidence on the downside, that, you know, again, Tell, telling you that the smart money is aggressively speculating on further downside in the market. If they're taking the upside, same thing. Aggressively speculating on the upside, further upside in the market. But sometimes this is just as valuable when it's mixed like this because, again, it doesn't give you a trade, but sometimes cash, sitting in cash is your best trade. Not doing too, mu too much when you shouldn't be sometimes is your best trade and it's got nothing to do with the markets going up or down for that position to be right. You understand? You shouldn't be in cash and worry about the market going up or down. You should be in cash when you feel like whatever you're paying attention to, whatever your signals are is providing no edge. For me, it's that simple. If flow right now is telling, is providing me no edge, right? It's not telling me that the short money is getting aggressive on the upside. It's not signaling to me that they're getting aggressive on the on the downside. It's just showing me they're really not doing too much. They're not leaning either way. That's that's my edge there. You know, that's my edge if I'm paying attention to flow. But again, a lot of traders who are coming to the steam room or look at flow in general will look at this and get wrapped up into the each and every individual order or be turned off that there's call and put buying and feel like they should take a particular direction every time. And, you know, then they're not going to get far in this game anyway, if that's the case, if you take that approach with any of it. So that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. And, and here's the beauty of it. This doesn't stay like this forever. It's not going to stay like this forever. 
eventually, the inevitable is they're going to get aggressive on one of the two sides. And that might be the setup you're waiting for. You know? So, like, you know, you guys heard Lucci. Lucci uses the flow in that manner in a total different way that, you know, I do or a lot of other people do. He waits for certain setups where flow confirms what he's looking for, what he's looking at, and that's where, you know, he's looking to put down the hammer, as we say. And then there are days where Lucci comes in and says, I'm going to the gym. And by gym, I mean, I'm watching blah, 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 blah. You know, right? And the reason why he does that is he knows he's a degenerate and he can't stay small to entertain himself. So he knows he's got to get up and walk away. That's his cash position, right? That's what he does. Otherwise, he's going to get wrapped up in the noise, find a trade just out of desperation, and take a hickey. I'm telling you, everybody I've come across in this game, guys, it's, it's very similar. You know, everybody, it, it's different styles as far as trading styles. But you're looking, you rely on your setups, that sweet spot. And that's the bulk of your PL. Everything else is just, you know, you get lucky, you make a little money. You're unfortunate, you're going to lose a little money. That all evens itself out in my eyes. You know, that will all even itself out. All right, let me get to some questions on um, names you guys have. And we can look at the names. If you look at the names you guys are mentioning, um, you can see here, Maria just gave three perfect names. Three perfect names. Ready? Here we go. Let's start from the back first. Etsy. I just posted on Twitter. Another good-looking September sweeper for Etsy. Not a bad-looking order. Stock has had real nice sweeper activity. They opened up the largest position of open interest. I remember it like it was yesterday. I had no idea what the hell Etsy was, and everybody laughed at me. Okay, now we look at Etsy still continuing to catch flow. Good looking order, like I said. What, what am I going to do with this thing up here now? You know what I mean? What can I do with this thing up here now? If Etsy caught all this flow and has been bullish forever, look where this stock is. What do you? What can I do with this? Can I flip it? Yeah, that's possible. But can I feel comfortable taking, initializing a position up here? Is the risk reward up here after a move like this in my favor? Honestly. So this is my, this is my point. Like Etsy is a name that has had good looking flow. But this is this is tough, and it may go higher. Look at look at freaking WDC. You know what I mean? It keeps going for crying out loud. What I just, from my experience, guys, I can't do it because what happens is, again, everything is odds, probability, risk, reward in this game. You guys got to understand that. That's what it all comes down to. Are you going to lock in profits? Are you able to lock in profits before that whoop comes? Because that whoop is coming. That whoop is going to come. Tough. So, and that's why I think Maria brought up those names. Perfect. Okay. Here's another one. IGT. You guys know I like this name. Earnings screwed us because you had to hold into earnings to catch the move. Okay. But you know that every time this thing comes down, I told you, they, they come in and buy this thing. And that's where I like to own it. You know? Wash. They buy it. That's where I want to own it. Unfortunately, like I said, you have to hold through earnings to catch this move. So it was a pain in the neck. But up here now, still catching flow. Same thing. I, I just, again, risk reward. I can't do it. 
Now you get a, a breather, a little pullback, some consolidation, go quiet a little bit, and they come after it aggressively again. You might have a decent setup there. And the last one Maria mentioned is this pen. Now here's not bad, right? Off a pull, good looking action. But remember what I told you about this week? All the good looking action. The whole open interest in pen is March. They were buying pen back here, March calls for 2018. Those have been sitting in Hawaii and been rolling up into March calls. Feels like forever in this pen. They expire Friday. They expire. So what do they have to do if they want to have exposure to pen? They got to replace those March calls, right? That's what they did. Now, that's bullish. Don't get me wrong. It's bullish that they still want to be long of pen. But it's not aggressive. You know what I mean? It's not aggressive. Now, I, I think you should keep it on your radar. If there's more action that comes in, definitely worth a look. But right now, in my eyes, they were replacing March positions for the most part. Okay? So my point being, even the good-looking stuff out there, guys, you know what I mean? Even the good-looking stuff out there had a little twist to it. But perfect three names, Maria. Perfect three names. Nigerian pumped the IGT. Oh, boy. And we got to throw that in the uh, garbage bill. We're going to throw that in the garbage pile. Um, what else? Give me some names. Those are three great names. Maria, somebody mentioned Win. What do you want me to do? So let me get this straight. Win, we start to see them come after May calls aggressively into this consolidation after a big pull, right? Stock is dead. You hear Win is dead money. You can't own Win. All of a sudden, we see the smart money come in, dumping millions. Okay? Market gets a little shaky. This thing's ready to fall out of bed. What do we see into that? He comes in with the best sweeper activity out of all this flow. He couldn't own enough of those May calls. Then you get explosion on news. So now... First of all, we're not really seeing anything special up here. Flow-wise, there was a little put buying that some people caught for a day trade in the room. But let's say we do see flow in, in win over here. Can, can we weigh? Can it have the same weight that we put into this here? Can any flow have the same weight that we put into this here? This was the sweet spot. Win or lose. It's got nothing to do. Forget this movie even happened. Win or lose, that was the sweet spot in win. Now, it's a whole different ball game. Now, you know you're talking about level wise too. This was in the 160s and the 180s. Whole different ball game in my eyes. But another good example. Um, this is from earlier. Somebody said they mentioned the spread micron 20,000 May 70s and bought 20,000 April puts aggressive bullish trade KB. In my eyes now, there's you can't label the action we're seeing in Micron as aggressive, even if it isn't. It's we know this. It's everybody and their mother and their sister's aunt knows that Micron is in bull mode right now. Plus, you're going into earnings. I think Micron is great. What are they trading at? A three multiple for crying out loud? They may blow away earnings for all I know. But a lot of that's factored in here. As far as a quality risk reward setup or flow, that's not the case anymore. Gone. So KB, no matter what flow we're seeing in Micron now, for me, it's useless. It's useless. There's no edge. If you're holding the stock and you're looking at the flow, that's why I made a joke. Like, should I do I even need to post micron sweepers anymore? That was about 10 points ago, by the way. And 
you know, members thought I was serious and said, no, no, I'm in the stock. I want to know if, you know, there's still that velocity of call flow. And okay, if you're in it and you're letting your winners run up until earnings, which a lot of people are, and I give them credit for that, but to take a position here now, I can't do it. I cannot do it, and I don't think the flow provides the same edge it did. I'm being dead honest. Uh, Ani saying Twitter. I think Ani's in the same camp, man. I think I think it's in the same camp. You know, there's still Twitter flow out there. It's bullish. Yeah, you know, yeah. Big move here. I guess you could call this a little bit of breather, and then we saw a little more flow, but. Everybody knows Twitter is bullish now. The flow is bullish. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. You know, risk reward here on Twitter. Longer term, maybe you see some, you know, you see some value there. Me personally, we're traders. I think we're forcing a trade here. I think we're forcing a trade here. That's my personal opinion off the action. You know? And like I said, if if you're going to buy a Twitter, I mean, you better, like CRM has better looking action than Twitter. You might as well just buy that thing. You know, might as well just buy that thing. Because like I said, CRM, they continue to plow into this. Now again, this week, they likely replaced March calls. There was another huge order. But the flow's been ridiculous. And she looks like she might be getting tired here. No. These things look exhausted to me. I'm not going to lie to you. There's some stuff that continues to go higher, but eventually these things are going to get tired here. And again, are the RR risk reward on, on exhausted names, um, they're really not in your favor. Square. Throw it into the camp, Ethan. You know, throw it into the camp with everything else. I, I know you, I, I know you guys probably get frustrated when I when I do this, you know, but the last time we were doing this was in January. I hate the you know, <laughs> that's the last time we were doing this. And I, these things continued higher for another week or two. So if you think you have an opportunity there to maybe weasel out some money before a poll, I think you're better off for waiting for the poll. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, when these things get hit, you want to be there ready. You understand? That's my whole point. Because the riffraff won't. They're going to be in it when these things pull. If you like square, that's what you're waiting for. If it doesn't, you spit on it and go to the next name. But that's going to be the opportunity. You get a... We get one of these events again where the markets sell off. And trust me, if they sell off, they're going to sell off. These things are going to come tumbling down. They're all going to rush for the exits. And that's eventually going to create an opportunity if they come back into it flow wise. Uh, yeah, Square has had, Paul, Square has had nice action. Square, I don't know if you guys remember. There was the best looking order in Square. There was a March call buyer. I think it was right around here somewhere into that weakness it could have been. And he got run over. The stock continued lower and looked like crap. And then, you know, look where they are now by March expiration. Uh, but, yeah, there, there's good looking action in Square. There's good looking action in Square. You know, and, and, and there are other names too. Like I'll give you another example. Um, you guys are talking about like Baba. You know, which had a little different look than some of the others, right? Baba is not that runaway machine like the others. Um, and you got some news and, and a gap higher. That's why what I'm saying is it may be worth you guys continuing to play. But you still have to, in my opinion, size down or if you're too long, put on some protection because this is fine and dandy that Baba is going higher. But what happens when the money comes out 
of all the big guys. You understand? Can Baba outperform? It's possible. It's possible, but you have to take that into account. And I think that's the problem with a lot of tech names. I think like PayPal is a better setup than some of the other names we've looked at. That's caught some decent action. You know, but the question you got to ask yourself again is if the big tech names are heavy when they come out of them, I'm talking about. That may not be for another two weeks. Who knows? You know, can this thing survive? And if you think so, then it was worth a play, but I don't think a high confidence play. You know, similar to Bob, I think it was worth a play. Um, I see a couple of people still talking about X. For me, X is tough. I know the order. All of us traded it off the order Friday. The whole room, they traded X Friday. Okay, so we know all about that sweeper. And it's nothing new in X. Okay, but the reason we got excited about it, it stood out like a sore thumb in the midst of flow that looked like crap. And you had a nice pull here, okay? But you got a name in the news here, okay? Everybody knows the bullish thesis in X, and the flow has been going on here forever. This is nothing new. This is nothing new. You guys remember X of this pull caught even better looking action. Remember before the tariffs came out of Trump, Trump's mouth. You know, so you just, again, you, you got, for me, you got to be careful unless the flow starts to change as a whole. But these things are in the news. I, for me, it rubs me the wrong way, these things all the time. What happens like, uh, you know, these tariffs, Trump was just doing a scare, blah, blah, blah. And you all of a sudden, you got these things heavy again. Yeah, you, know, you, you got, you moving around news there. I don't like that stuff. Uh, Jenny's asking, Gilead, Gilead had some flow. They were, were replacing some March calls. Um, but the flow's been okay. Like Bristol Myers has had decent flow. A couple of those names. AZN has seen some flow. Uh, but a lot of it replacing March. This week is, a again, a good week to look. Any names... That caught your attention last week. Keep them on watch from this point, because you'll you'll see. Like I said, it'll be clear cut flow wise what they're buying, if they're buying, if they're buying. Um, risk reward blah on Twitter and Micron. I agree. I agree. Uh, Tesla, yeah, Tesla. There was some put buying there, which you know. I try not to get wrapped up into it. Um, but yeah, Tesla's had some put action recently, has been heavy. There's been some news there. Uh, if you're looking to get long Tesla, I would look for same thing that came into that, a missile. Um, and then you could get a, you know, look for a decent trade out of it. And like I said, you got, here's a perfect example. Okay, let's go over this. Tesla, missile into this candle, right? You have this, people asking questions. What do you think about Tesla here? Just like I'm telling you about Micron and all the rest of them, well, if a move like this, I have no interest anymore until we get something like this. So now if you see a, another Tesla missile and you were eyeing Tesla for a long, that would be your signal. Even better that the news is bearish around it. The issue is Tesla doesn't catch a lot of missiles. There's a lot, spec flow. You'll see weekly action, peanuts, but missiles are rare. Like that other booking, you know? Well, booking is more rare than anything, but you know, you, there's rare, rarely sees action like that. Or even, you know, Amazon from time to time, you'll see blocks but not those sweeper missiles. 
you know, we haven't seen again a sweeper missile in Amazon back here was the last time. We saw some big blocks and some order flow and stuff like that, but the missile was all the way back here. So that Tesla's a good example for all the names, a lot of the names you guys are mentioning. I would look for just take this for example, this move off the action, and now you got that pull. So anybody who was eyeing Tesla up here and held off because risk reward it was useless. Now is where you start looking for flow. You know, now is where you start looking for entries if you were eyeing the name. Again, it doesn't matter, win or lose. If you were looking up here, you weren't worried about it then, right? Why? Because all it was was green candles all the way up. Yeah, now that the Tesla's um, under some selling pressure, all of a sudden, there's not too many bulls out there. And that's what would stand out to me if we see action come in. H-O-N, that's, yeah, H-O-N, once in a blue moon will catch like small orders, but nothing ever major there. Nothing ever major. Would be interesting if it did catch it. How are these names, have they been, that's another group, right? The industrials, they, um, yeah, they're just being ignored right now. Ignored, but no, no action in Honeywell. Uh, a couple of you guys talking about Boeing. Nothing really spec action there. I think they were puts and calls, to be honest, this week. But spec action there. Uh, but that's another group. And you know what's interesting too? Maybe it comes here. IWM has looked okay. You would think we'd see some underbelly sweeper activity there. You know, I like that. I like that because you don't need a raging market. To make money, I th I told you guys, my best years of my career came after the Nasdaq bubble blew up and all the money poured into small caps. I don't think people realize that everybody looks at 2000 when the Nasdaq bubble blew up as like it was 2008 devastation. That couldn't be further from the truth. All the money came out of all those internet names that were just. Up in a straight line, 99 into 2000, all that money came rushing into the small cap markets. And while everyone was getting buried in those tech names, small caps, you, they were printing money, printing money in small cap land. So maybe, you know, that's a possibility, but we're, we're not really seeing it yet. We're not seeing the flow. Outside of, again, some tech names, we're not seeing the flow come into um, small caps. You know, we saw one, here's a, a couple of unusual buyers I was mentioning. Let me see if I could get, no, that's not it. What are you guys, what's that flagrance name, that court action Friday? I-F-I-I? -I? No. Um, I, I could probably look on the, let me go on the board for crying out loud. Oh, if I don't know the symbol, how am I going to get it off the board? Is that it? IFF. Could that be it? Yeah, that's it. No, yeah, that's it. What is this chemical company? I don't know. But see, this is like the, the clean action, the clean action that we were seeing. IFF into this weakness, caught an unusual buyer, opened the largest position of open interest. Yeah, I'm sure the options are a disaster as far as liquidity, stuff like that. But this is like the selective buying that was going on that I was talking about. Names like this, IFF. You know, but maybe we'll see some small cap uh, flow. It's possible. Oh, Maria was screaming IFF. I get, yeah, that KSS um, was one of the names. I, I day traded it Friday. Um, real nice action has been strong as hell. This KSS, as some retailers have been. Yeah, look at this move on KSS. Amazon was putting them out of business. Then what they do? They signed a deal with Amazon or something. Then you had to kill a move, and then not a bad spot either. They got aggressive here. So 
I listen, I wouldn't chase it, but I would definitely keep an eye on this, especially like anything else, but into next week. If we see some action come into it again, this is not a bad spot here. You know, at least you got a breather off a move like this. Uh, William, what's up? Uh, he's talking about INCY. We saw action. I didn't even realize the pull on that late week. Um, but this has been some of the selective biotech action we've been seeing. Now, William pointed out there is um, an event coming up, a major event, an FDA event, William, is it in, or in April? Uh, but caught some decent action. Again, the spot wasn't ideal, you know? He had how many days? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then it was up two bucks before it reversed, I remember. Nine straight up days. So if you're looking at it, I wouldn't let this concern me or the action in this thing. Um, but there is an event, FYI. Where's William? Abstract release in April, William? Yeah, so he's saying abstract release, and I think it was April he mentioned in the room. Um, but you got a nice dip there if you want, you know, if you're interested. I think, William, you put on a little position, right? I think he took a small stab. The good thing about these biotechs, if you're trading equity, you're playing with time bombs. But the options, we talk about risk-reward, if you utilize that strategy, put in what you're willing to lose type thing, you catch the right biotech, it can make up for a whole lot of losers if you're playing the right way. Uh, conference, April 13th. Uh, yeah, Ethan's saying the April 15th AACR, so right around the same time frame. So that's what they're probably playing for. You may get a run-up prior to that. You know, we see that a lot in biotech. Um, but a perfect candidate to put in what you're willing to lose. Forget about stop loss. Don't even stress yourself out. You got to pull back here if you're interested. Um, you know, put in what you're willing to lose. And you never know with these things. You know, Sage was one. Remember that back in the day? Back in the day last year. But look at this. God forbid you had a piece of that. Even a small piece. You, you never know. Um, SRPT was another one that caught action that had a nice move here. I wouldn't chase that up here. No way in hell right now, even though this thing's a money shot or sweepers. But this thing's been moving a bit now. Um, you know, selectively, there's been some biotech action, but not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. You know, Ion, INCY, one of the most recent. Anybody else remember? Did we see any other flow in some of these uh, risky biotechs? Not much, right? I don't think much. You know, the bigger names, like I said, there's bull flow, but uh, Bristol Myers, that's why you guys may be asking about it. There was a big order on Friday, again, replacing a big March order. There was some size March buying. Um, so they replaced that. When was that? That was into weakness all the way back here. Wow. Look at what the hell you had to sit through, though. Um, Maria St. J&J had a little flow. Oh, yeah, J&J, I think a couple of guys um, took a small shot off those weeklies, Maria. That was a week ago, I think, right? Called weeklies on like a Thursday and then had a nice push Friday. You know, we're not even, that's the other thing, guys. We are, we're not even seeing that spec action like that you know we're not seeing much of that either when it just trust me maybe it was the week the quarter coming to an end march expiration all that stuff the flow has not been ideal the flow has not been ideal not a lot of clarity in the flow clvs no that could catch a block from time to time not really sweepers but where i think there was some big blocks um might have been this dip or this dip one or the other. But mostly blocks on in that name. I don't remember seeing anything recently. Yeah, BIIB had a little bit of action down here. But no, nothing standing out. Trust me. Um, 
here, by the way, I usually do this. I almost forgot to do it. That's how blah the action's been. So here was the top action, in my opinion, Friday. Okay? Here's that X order that a lot of us day traded it. Nine a million dollar sweep. You know, and that that's a bull that's a, the definition of a bull missile. But you know, there's been a lot of these in X. You know, there's been a lot of it. Without a doubt, was worthy of a day trade, caught some action after that. Um, but a swing, make sure you like the name. KSS, that was the action. This is some of the action. Uh, you can see small lot sweeper aggressive. So you could, I wouldn't chase it, it had a decent move. Uh, where'd they come in? Oh, I randomly picked a couple of sweepers here. 62. Where'd she close at, KSS? 63. So a buck. Yeah, so keep it on watch. You get a little red and you see some action in it, if you like the name. Not a bad setup compared to some of the other stuff out there. I like that spot better than the others. Um, this is that IFF I told you. Oh, here's the other cockamamie name I never heard of. GCP. The hell is that? Oh, same. Wow. That's interesting. No, same group. Anyway, GCP. They bought the non sweeper April 30s. This is a name that never catches action. I've never seen an action in my life. So, yeah. How interesting is it? Depends. Yeah, sometimes I like these, these, these names when, again, they're coming after them as a whole. You know? Like, that's what they're focusing on. Like, let's say we start to see that in small caps. You know, you'll see a lot of these things outperforming and doing well. So, selectively, you know, I primarily like to look for sweeper activity, but sometimes you get these news events on these things, you know, where it comes out of nowhere. But the the options are dreadful. You're not getting out of those calls alive unless it works out. So make sure you take that into the you know factor that into the equation if you're playing these things. They're like chop stocks. What a Dollar ripping them. Uh, KR, yeah, KR had a little bit of blood buying down here. This is a name they could get really aggressive with. Worth keeping an eye on. There was another food name, but I think it was March Replacement. How, me personally, I sound like a broken record. All this stuff here, unless you were eyeing the name, I would. it's a good time, again, to put a watch list together, you know? Any action you see stemming up, it's in a name you like, keep an eye on it. And this way, you're ready to fire when some action comes into it next week, week after. But a lot of the market looks like this. There's a good chunk of the market that looks like this. I got to believe sweepers are going to see opportunity in this eventually. They're just ignored right now. That's what I'm saying. The concentration's all in the same tech stuff. That's that's where it's been. All this stuff is being ignored. You know, all this stuff is being ignored. How's the uh, Home Depots and stuff? And they're not doing anything either, right? Here's a perfect candidate. No? Perfect candidate. Huh. Everybody wanted this thing, right? Well, this... This can't go on again from here. The stock would be at $1,000 by the summer. This always happens, guys. Always. If you remember, um, like the steel names, this is a daily? Yeah, this is a daily. Wow. Why does it look? You know, you had this crazy move post-election. Look, right? This looks like similar to some of these tech names out there, right? This move back here. Look what this thing had to go through after that. So eventually it happens. WDC, look at this, right? Big move. Look what it had to go through here. 
You know, and we all know Micron, and that flow remained bullish, but you had that big move, and it goes through something like this. The, the most bullish of the names, you know what I mean? Name could be super bullish flow and price action. They always go through something like this, at the least something like this. So that, that's my point with these tech names right now. You're buying, them, let's say, up here somewhere, right? Do you think you can get enough upside to warrant getting stuck in something like this? That's what you got to ask yourself. Or do you wait for this? Okay. And look at this. Even if you wait for this, right, which wipes out all of this anyway, even if you buy here with time, you were better off than chasing the highs. You understand? Cost wise. So that's what I would be waiting for out of all those, all these euphoric names. Uh, Maria saying HD, she likes. Yeah, that setup is exactly what you want to see there. And what other names um, look like that, Maria? You see any other names looking like that? That were hot and kind of just uh, a lot of the industrials probably look like. What's Cat been doing? Oh, yeah, look, Cat too. See? Same thing, right? Look at this crazy move. And, you know, just digesting. Digesting. Uh, what name? Lenore. Yeah, the home builders are ripe if they could come after them. You know, I my favorite is the DHI, which looks a little worse than the Lenar, uh, just because it usually catches the best flow, this DHI. But this group has been tough. You know, but they, we saw those Bill Miller sweeps in the DHI and he got run over. There's been a little more buying down here, but we'll see. We'll see. I've seen crazier things than that. This was a strong ass play and she just needed to breathe. There was a decent amount of time behind the calls. Yeah, KBH probably looks the same, right? Yeah, look at that. Not much flow in KBH. What about Pulte? Ah, they all look the same. They all look the same. You know, so that, again, another group, you know, another group that just ignored, completely ignored. You know, but that's, that's where we want to start looking if they buy them, Mickey D's. That was another, you know, look, couldn't do anything wrong, Mickey D's, right? Couldn't do anything wrong, but has to breathe. Um, but, yeah, there are a lot of groups like this. Some look worse than others, but a lot of groups look like this. But we need, we need the flow there, you know? I do, anyway. I do. I need the flow there to tell me there's momentum in these things. Otherwise, you're sitting... And um, you got to sit through this garbage, which may be how you like to, you know, position, but you need time. You need time at the least. What was I just hitting up? I just had another symbol that just came to me. Um, that's a good example of it. On the well saying, it's almost like you're better off waiting to buy puts on square. Yeah, well, Noel, for me, like the downside, unless we're in full-fledged bear markets, and never, I was never intrigued by the downside, but I, I get it. If you're, you know, I mean, Lucci loves it. You see Lucci, Lucci does cartwheels when he can catch a down move. You know, so for me, I rather just, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to make a trade. You know, if you are interested in getting long, but you feel it's not the right place, you don't have to buy puts. You could just sit, do nothing, and wait, you know, and wait for better setups to come around. They'll come around. It's only a matter of time. They'll come around, you know? You, yeah, exactly. You're better off just doing nothing. You know, they, that's the old saying, cash is a position, you know? And you, it, you don't, that's another thing we like to do as traders. Trust me, I totally get it. It's one extreme or the other, usually. You know what I mean? We like to go from one extreme to the other. But 
you can even play and just make sure you're light enough that because there's not quality, there aren't those quality setups out there, your loss is not going to, it's not going to be that painful. You know, it's not going to shy. You're not going to shy away from a better opportunity because you got lumped up when you shouldn't have. You know, so if you're going to play, play nice and easy. And um, while you're waiting for some of the better stuff to come around, and then when the better stuff comes around, uh, you'll be ready to take advantage of. Because that's what's, that's the difference, guys. The difference is when the, I call it the riffraff, but the retail money, they like to get, they get excited into this. Okay, because they see, every, they see green. Their juices are flowing. They, you know, they see the money after money. They, they look at this and see opportunity here. The difference between the retail money and the smart money is the smart money sees opportunity when this happens. And the retail money wants nothing to do with it. You know, they want to be in this. You know, they bought it up here. They loved it up here. They swore by it. They'll push us, the market story, the fundamentals, blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, in a week, things change, and they don't. Now the Armageddon's come. So, but that's that's the difference, man. That's the difference. That's the difference. Retail money—they get excited into this. That's why we, you know, we see it all on those sentiment indicators we look at. And the smart money always gets—not—I shouldn't say always, but usually gets most bullish into this. And they become less and less bullish as it gets further and further away. Uh, what other things before we wrap up? Any questions on anything uh, we spoke about today or any other symbols that I missed? Let me scroll through just in case I skipped over some symbols. I do that too much on here. UA, some of the retail names look decent. Um, the flow outside of earnings flow hasn't been anything incredible. Uh, but you have a lot of earnings. That's why cores, quarter spread, you know, nothing super aggressive, but a spread there. That's a good, that's how I like that setup. That's why I'm on, talking about it. You could keep an eye on um, any call sweeper activity that comes into that. You know, again, red hot name. This is the process of just digesting that. I haven't looked at like Lululemon. What's that doing? Yeah. No, just... Yeah, it ran out of gas up there. Ran out of gas. Uh, but some of the retail names have looked better. You know, Macy's. Look at Macy's. Back from the dead. Um, there was another one. What was the other name? I'm trying to think of some of the uh, smaller retail names too. You know, like TLRD had pre-earnings flow. Now this is post-earnings. You can maybe look at it. But still, you know, breathing that off. Look, look at it. Big moves. All big moves there, guys. Oh, the banks. I'm surprised none of you guys asked about the banks. It's almost the same the same thing there. Kind of in like no man's land here. You know? Kind of no man's land. For me, flow's been bullish, bullish, bullish. You know, this Poland Bank of America, they swallowed up. She was back at highs in no time. Outside of Wells Fargo, right, that has had news around it. They seem to be getting in trouble every day. Um, you know, these banks have been stellar. Morgan Stanley catching flow up here at highs. Spot. I'm not crazy about the spot, though. But, yeah, this is just like a grind up, yeah, you know, grind up trend type of thing. So tough to get excited. I, you know, pullbacks again, pullbacks. You know, you see a little pullback, you could that trade. So look, boop, boop. You see some action, you get a little move, trade type thing. But for big moves from here, it's I mean it's possible. Possible. Tough. But yeah, the the flow is bullish. Morgan Stanley bullish. JP Morgan has had bull flow. Uh Goldman. Has had some bull flow. Oh, that looks like the others. Uh, Bank of America, probably the best flow of the bunch. And Morgan, Morgan Stanley. 
Yeah, what somebody's talking about Walmart. You know, there's another example. Good call. Another example. Hey, look at this. It's not going to go on forever. And whoop. So if you see some good looking, um, there was weekly spec stuff all morning Friday. She had a big move. I don't think any of us played it, unfortunately, on Friday. Look at this move. That week, uh, Friday expiration stuff all expired. That's what they were playing. Pri primarily, that's what they were playing. All March stuff. So, but yeah, definitely a candidate for some good looking action. So you guys got the names, you know, you guys definitely have the names. So that, that's what you, um, that's what I would be eyeing personally and looking for flow. The other stuff, just wait for a poll. May not come Monday, may not come this week. Maybe it comes another week. Don't let the FOMO get to you. Don't let the excitement get to you. You know, you got to avoid that in this market, in this game period, if you're going to find any success. Um, uh, but when you get that poll, Dicks, good call. Nice action there. A lot of put selling in Dicks. DKS. Been some put selling throughout this move. Looking good. Uh, Hal, yeah, that had some activity Friday. They were replacing March calls. Listen, all these energy names, they're all the same to me, you know? Like I said, Exxon Mobil put a good look in order. And, you know, it's still got a shot. But I'm just saying, look, this is how difficult this is. Yeah, it looked like it might be getting some momentum behind her and whoop. And now she's trying to battle back here again. Chevron, a little bit better off the action. You know, a little bit better. But tough. But that may be, you know what I'm saying? That may be the risk reward there that you're looking for. But if you if they come easy, consider it lucky. These things are tough and crude is basically gonna have a big big it's gonna play a big factor in your outcome, what the hell crude does. And like I said, I I gotta check the the um the new COT that are out, but that the positioning in crude is not ideal if you're bullish. Not ideal. At at the very least, it's going to be a tough trip in crude if it remained the same. Anybody? Oh, um, I don't have that. I thought I had the chart handy. I'll post it on Twitter. I'll post it on Twitter if you guys don't have it. Uh, take a peek. Um, the COT data that comes out, the positioning for the actual uh, CL. Um, and remember the remember NASDAQ, I was showing you the positioning. They were bearish. I think that unwound. S&P now a little too bullish. Yeah, we lost some of that sentiment, guys. We lost some of that sentiment in the overall market. Yeah, APC has been one of the uh, better looking names. Some decent flow there too. But look, look at look at all this. Look at this. You know, like I said, this is the better looking name, and look at what you're sitting through. Whew, that's a lot of Ajita. And you think this is easy to sit through? This right here, this thing looks like this feels like she's going out of business these three days right here. Boop, boop, boop. Not easy. Not easy. Um, what's that other one that PXD? Yeah, look at this. They all tough cookies. This one looked app this one looks appetizing too, no? But it did, you know, like this PXD had a big move. So it could be setting up again. But just you know, buckle up and prepare for some uh prepare prepare for a couple ulcers at the least. CRC, remember how good that thing looked? You remember how good that thing looked? Now, listen, that's a big move, you know? So this is not too far out of the ordinary here. It's a big move. 
off the lows there. I'm telling you, if if you weren't reliant on crude, I just I'd feel a lot more better. I you know I'd feel a lot better with these things. I'd have a little little more confidence in any flow there. Uh, James is saying I like that you use candlesticks. Uh, James, not to rain on your parade, but I only have candlesticks on here for uh, you guys. I kind of the candlesticks confuse me. Honestly, I I could go. This is this I could go this route right here. Less noise for me. Line. How about a line chart? <laughs> you technicians out there probably no not a line chart no i throughout my career i've used the um what you would call it the bars you know but they don't um what do i do with it you guys know what i'm talking about they don't they don't show up as good on the screen when i do webinars where i take screenshots not that bar these things, HLC, high low. Uh, I just, I, I could see it clearer, you know? Okay, this is where the stock closed. That's the high. I'm not a big candlestick guy. I never got into candlesticks. Maybe because I'm used to it. You know, maybe because I'm used to it. But I know a lot of you swear by the candlesticks. So, you know, I'm not into dojis. I like hammers. You know, but. I think like engulfing gets you too pumped up for something that really isn't that big of a deal. Gets you too bared up or too bulled up, you know? But I just got a clearer picture there. Well, my thoughts exactly, I'm not a tech. Yeah, if, if you're not into technicals um, as much, you probably aren't gonna use uh, candlesticks. Someone bought a lot of 69 XL equals upon the open Friday. What um yeah, but they might be replacing March, Tom. That's the problem. They were April, Aprils. Yeah. They might be uh they might be replacing a March position. That's the problem. But again, guys, all the excuses go out the window this week. You know, unless it's a clean cut roll, and we're gonna see that, or unless she's tied to stock, we're gonna see that. We can we can take the flow for what it's worth, you know? A lot of, like, here's what I was doing this week. I'd see some flow. I'd have to go make sure it wasn't tied, okay? I check an earnings date quickly to make sure it wasn't earnings related. I then would go look at open interest and see if there were any major positions there. You know, it felt like, oh, my God, like I was doing surgery this week. So it gets a lot cleaner this week, a lot cleaner. And I, I think we're going to get a good read on what the hell, the, how they're positioning. You know, even if it's nothing, you know, even if there's no call buying, we'll know, for, you know, we'll have a good read that, okay, there's no call buying out there and we should be cautious. Yeah, and here's the other thing. Like, you see the board here? And we'll wrap this up. You see the board, what I was telling you here, overall? How it's mixed like this? Watch. And you see, like, this. there's some green, though, right? You see green. Look, then red. But this is misleading. Because if this, a lot of this call buying is replacing March positions, then it's not really the call buying we want to be paying attention to. So what I'm saying is next week, if there, if there, if this all was just replacing March exposure, we're not going to have much green on here, and that's going to tell us a lot. You know, that's going to tell us a lot. Yeah, you know, a lot of ETS Friday. It was just a mess. It was a mess, complete mess. XXII that caught some flow. ATVI they were. Replacing some March positions. Every name had an excuse. It's incredible. Almost. BSX had some flow. They were replacing March positions. Penn, we spoke about. Etsy, one of the better looking orders on the day we spoke about. Netflix, 
they likely were rolling out some march there. So it was tough, tough. All right, guys, um, just quickly, I forgot to do it again. I always do. If you're new, you have any questions, go to wallstreetjesus.com and go to the product section. Uh, I'm sorry, the strategy section. You can read up on some of the stuff we do, some trade examples, how to utilize the information. Even if you just, if you don't trade individual names, how to use it, all that stuff. What's a sweep, why I pay attention to it. Uh, you could go to wallstreetjesus.com. You'll find all that. Uh, very quickly, this is what we offer free trial for the premium, free, no credit card at all. You don't have to put a credit card down there. Uh, you could access the room. Can you get a feel for three days? I don't know. You'll get an idea of what we do there depending on, listen, if you came this week, honestly, you probably left scratching your head. Because like I said, the flow wasn't telling me anything. And I've been doing this a long time so but you know you came in into the um the lower end of the range here where we had those missiles you know you probably thought fold was the best thing since sliced bread so depending on when you come you shouldn't look at it that way um but depending on when you come you know you get a better example of things uh and if you're interested 50 percent off the first month you get all that included um also we offer private twitter as a separate entity now so if you're just interested in just a private Twitter, um, you can get that for $59.99 a month, and you have access for that. Uh, private Twitter is included in the premium package, by the way. So there's no additional cost there. All right. And that's it. Guys, the webinars, uh, we did it one more time this week. We're going to start doing it once a month, and then maybe like in the summer, we'll do another little cluster. Um, uh, but for members, we're going to continue to do it every week, whether you're a member of the chat room or the or private Twitter. Um, it's going to be more of a member thing where we could talk about um, some of the stuff we're seeing week in, week out. Uh, and then, like I said, once a month, we'll do this where all everybody uh, can get together and talk about what we're seeing and stuff. All right. But, guys, I appreciate every week and every Saturday coming out. Um, I love talking market with you guys. You know that. If you have any questions, you can hit myself, Lucci, up. Good luck next week. Stay patient. Wait for your setup. It's the most important thing you can do in this game. All right, and we'll see. Uh, hopefully, we can make some money next week. Enjoy the weekend, everybody.